All right. Well, good afternoon again, and welcome to this very special event that we've titled From Campus to Clinic, a Mayo Clinic Surgical Technologist Journey. This event is being recorded. My name is Nicole Everett, and as Dean of Health Sciences, it's my pleasure to introduce this inspiring session. Today, we have the privilege to hear from Crystal Gray, who stands as a shining example of what our graduates can achieve with hard work, dedication and quality education provided here at Edgecombe Community College. Crystal, a recent graduate from our surgical technology program, has successfully transitioned into a remarkable role as a surgical technologist at the renowned Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Crystal's journey is particularly compelling, marked by a pivotal internship last summer that not only sharpened her skills, but also paved the way for her to secure a full-time position at the Mayo Clinic. There, she has been making significant contributions, assisting in specialized procedures, and playing a crucial role in the clinic's operation. Guiding us through today's conversation is Ms. Susie Shippen-Wagner, the chair of ECC Surgical Technology Program. Susie brings a wealth of knowledge and insight into the field, and her conversation with Crystal is sure to brighten the path from educational preparation to professional success in the world of healthcare. Thank you again for joining us. Now let's dive into this engaging conversation. Welcome to From Campus to Clinic. I will now turn the discussion over to Ms. Shippen Wagner. Good afternoon, everybody. Heaven knows I hope, there's, I hope there's a time limit on all of this because Crystal and I have a tendency to talk <laughs> on and on about this subject matter that we love so much. Hey, Crystal, we're both very long winded. <laughs> I'm doing well. It's so good to see you, my friend. You're so far away now. So it's, it's good to chat and to see you and uh, just just talk about this wonderful success that you're having at the Mayo. It's wonderful to be here. I miss all these familiar faces, though. I'm glad <laughs> to see everyone. So, Crystal, we'll get started. And I want to ask you, what inspired you to pursue a career as a surgical technologist? And how did your education here at Edgecombe help prepare you for that? Oh, gosh, where can I start? Um, well, I've been working in healthcare for like a little over 10 years. And different jobs and I've had different jobs in different settings and working at the hospital in our local community back home, I decided that I wanted to further my career. And I had thoughts of becoming an RN and or being a surgical technologist and I applied for both programs and it was meant to be for me to become a surgical technologist. Um, ECC actually, like it has changed my life like exponentially just you know, joining the program, being in your class, being under your instruction. Um, I really am very fortunate to be here and never in a million years would I think I would be here. Like two years ago, if you asked me, I would be living in Minnesota. I've never been to Minnesota before besides a plane layover. And now I live here and I work here and it's wonderful. Well, how did how does working at the Mayo differ from your expectations or from your experiences here at home? Coming here, I honestly can say like, I didn't know what the expectation was. You have, you know, you're held to this high standard, this high bar, you hear Mayo Clinic and you're not sure what to um, expect. Um, I will say coming from North Carolina and coming from ECC and being able to have clinicals in um, number one level trauma um, centers really gave me a great foundation. Um, there's some of my um, colleagues and peers that were here for the program while well, there were four of us and they didn't have the experience and they had experience, but they didn't have the experience that I was fortunate to get from going to ECC and being able to go to those clinical sites. So why surgical technology, Crystal? Is, is this a good career? How did you know it was a good fit? This career is so under... I won't say appreciated, but it's it needs to be out there. We need to let like the youth know that this exists. Being a surgical technologist is way more than just passing the surgeon an instrument. There's so many different pieces to it. Um, there's so many intricate parts to it. It's rewarding. 
I, I battled a little bit from going from patient care, working in an ICU as you know, a monitor um, tech and a nursing assistant to, to being in the OR where you're you know, gloved and gowned and you get the patient interaction for about two seconds before they go to sleep. But what I tell myself is that it's equally rewarding because I know that we're in there and we're managing something or we're fixing something. And this is helping the patient just as much as it is being there um, person to person. So why Edgecomb, Crystal? There's other programs. There's other things that you could do. Why, why was Edgecomb the best place to train for you? Why not Edgecomb? It was the only place for me to train. And I'm so thankful. Um, just the instruction. I mean, we had a smaller class size. We had individual. Um, we had lab time. Miss Brickhouse is there. Hi, um, Lindsay. Um, it was just overall, even my prerequisites, um, Miss Laura Otrimsky, hi. Um, I just had a lot of, you know, uh, mentorship and a lot of people that believed in me. And during the times when I thought I couldn't do it, I definitely was encouraged to go on and on. So since you've been at the Mayo, I know that you're doing cases now that we we didn't even think about doing as a student. So can you share some of your memorable experiences of some of those some of those challenging cases that you've been uh, been involved with? Oh gosh, um, there's so many. Each one of these surgeries, every surgery, I must say though, is important. Whether it's an outpatient surgery or um, you know hour long hours long surgery, but the surgeries here in neurosurgery are very complex. It differs from clinicals. Like we might have like three and four and five cases turned and turning over. Some days I only have one case. Um, one of the most, well, there's three that come to mind. One of the most memorable one was the first time that I was able to scrub um, a DBS, which is deep brain stimulation, and to actually see the patient while they were awake and what, you know, they had like Parkinson's and to see the results during the actual operation. I literally cried behind my glasses and my mask and everything because it was amazing to see what the surgeon could do for this patient and the outcome. And you got to see the results right there. Um, another um, memorable one is um, I was able to scrub in on two um, in utero cases where the patient had, um, gosh, I always get tongue tied saying it, um, well, it's spina bifida, so where the spine doesn't um, connect, right. so the spinal cord starts to grow outside of the actual um, spine. Wow. And I was able to see, it's myelomeningocele. That's exactly what it is. I had to get my thoughts together. I'm a little nervous, um, but that was also very rewarding to see and it was amazing. I probably counted 30 people that were in the room. There was a team for the patient, a team for the mother. There was a team just overall, like to see that you would never think you would see something like that, to see a baby that was still in utero have a spine um, operation. And I think Crystal, you and I have had a conversation before where there was a surgeon who was doing something brand new on the cutting edge of things was was writing a paper about it and you were able to be right there and scrub that case with him that was um that was back to the dbs so the um i actually wrote my capstone on it so there's a surgeon here that had worked with an engineer for many years and actually um engineered a new device to do actual um dbs deep brain stimulation it's, wow. it's it's amazing. It's it's very humbling. Um, sometimes I never realize where I work until someone asks me, and then I and they're like, Mayo Clinic, and it is that wonderful. But it's also there's a lot of teamwork here. There's so many different resources. Um, we interchangeably in the OR, you know, this constant communication um, between the anesthetist, between the surge tech, the surgeon. We have debriefings, briefings. And it's not unlike other places, but it's more involved in depth. And um, I'm very blessed to be here. And it's very challenging, but I'm learning. I think this profession, especially 
in the medical field. This is a forever learning. You know, med medicine is so innovative and things are changing. And, and that was leading right into my next question was, I, I know that we in the operating room sometimes get a bit cloistered and just see our folks. But I know that this is a, a wide ranging field where you have to deal with many, many different uh, collaborative allied health folks. And I'm sure you've made those connections and those relationships with those folks as well. I sure have. I was just going to say it's a collaboration, even just walking into the OR and getting ready to scrub your case. Um, you're communicating with the circulator, the um, first assistant, the um, nurse anesthetist, and everyone is on the same, you know, uh, on the same plane. Are you ready? Are you ready? Is there anything that you need? And there's so many different intricate um, pieces to it. I always tell people, you know, you think you go into surgery and you go in there and you go to sleep and you wake up and that's it. There's so much more that goes on inside of the operating room, as you know, Miss Susie. <laughs> now, Mayo, is this a teaching facility? I mean, do you have residents there as well? This is a huge teaching facility. That's another wonderful thing. You see people at different levels. So there's residents, we have fellows, we have medical students. Um, so everyone is so open to learning and to helping one another because everyone is going through a stage of learning. So on a daily basis on our you know surgeries, you'll have residents, fellows, and our attendings, which we call consultants that are in, in the operating room. So you might be in with a new scrub tech as myself, but then there's a um, second year resident. There might be a medical student I was fortunate to have a medical student that was in there that actually was asking me questions. And I was enlightening um, that student on the things, the little bit that I know, but I've learned so much, so much. And like I said, just coming from ECC, just having that foundation, I couldn't imagine coming from any other school and not knowing. So one of the things you and I are, are familiar with surgical technology and, and folks in our audience may not be. So will you give them an idea of what this profession entails and what we're talking about as far as your training and preparation? Well, training and preparation, um, well, you know, the regular schooling, your prerequisites, your anatomy and biology, um, and then coming into the clinical field and having lab. Um, simulation and then and actually going in the field to um, different clinical sites um, here, which is similar, but a little more, a, a lot more entail, I would say. Um, there's so much. I mean, first and foremost is the patient and keeping, you know, sterility and making sure that, you know, you have, I call it octopus arms and octopus eyes because you're constantly throughout the surgery making sure that nothing is contaminated. Um, you're making sure that equipment is properly um, put together. You're anticipating the needs of the surgeon. So it's very detailed because you not only have to be able to manage these things, you have to be able to know the procedures. And there's very many different procedures. So a lot of the times, you know, the actual surgeon is dependent on you and it's a relationship, right? So it's a trust relationship and it's like any other relationship and it's, um, you have to know what they need. Sometimes they don't know what they need and you know what they need or they're just putting their hand out. I had one surgeon say, give me the thing. And in my head, I'm like, which one of these 5,000 things do you want? But I knew because I had um, done that procedure several times. Wonderful. So Crystal, one of the things that we like to talk about is just trying to maintain our professionalism and those training opportunities. And like we always say, medicine is, is just ever evolving and ever changing. So do you get a chance to do that at the Mayo as well, as far as uh, you know, training ex uh, exercises and things like that? We have um, weekly in-service we have vendors that come to the hospital. We have many learning modules. So we are kept on the up and up and we are taught the new like systems, the new equipment. Um, there's briefings, debriefings. So we're constantly, this is, we're constantly learning. Yeah. 
And I know when you went for your internship that the Mayo accepted five students and you were one of those five nationwide. And I think it must have worked out well because they're accepting 10 students this year. They are. There were actually four. So there were four of us okay. and it went well. Um, I've been invited to the um, welcoming for the um, new students that are coming. And this year, yes, they've chosen 10. So it was definitely a success. Um, one of the things that um, made it great for me, and this is for anyone like starting a new job as a surgical technologist, it's very important for you to have a preceptor that believes in you and that is wanting to teach and to learn. And that was like one of the big deciding factors as well. I had an awesome um, preceptor over the summer. I've had several, but I had one main one and he was awesome. And because it went so well, they are now taking 10 this year. And we have another student who's coming to learn under your instruction now. That is still mind blowing and amazing. I'm so proud. I cannot wait to meet him. I cannot wait to show him the town and just to, you know, let him know about the Mayo culture. It's so diverse here. You meet people from all around the world, patients, surgeons, peers, so I'm so happy to, I cannot wait for him to come. <laughs> and oh. we're so excited to have another student going to the Mayo. And I know that you're going to take good care. I am very <laughs> much so. So Crystal, what advice uh, would you give current students or aspiring surgical technology students who are interested in pursuing a career at the Mayo? I would tell them, do not give up. Um, things seem challenging. There's days where you feel like, did I make the right choice? Or this is so hard. And but just to, to stick with it and to um, go ahead and, you know, s follow the course and use all your resources. There's many people that, you know, are behind you that want to see you succeed. And it's OK to use those resources. There's not there's some even here, like some days I before my case starts, I go into another OR and speak to one of my peers and ask them questions if I'm, you know, unsure. So my advice to any student is this is a great, great career choice and to just follow the course and stick with it. Never give up. <laughs> Crystal, we've talked about the operating room and, and how that environment can get a, a little stressful sometimes. So, so how do you manage that stress? How do you manage going in on maybe a, a big case that you've never done before? Well, I'm a nervous wreck on the inside. <laughs> they say I cover it well, but you're always, you want to do well, right? You want to make sure that the safety of the patient is, you know, kept. The patient is first and foremost. And I just, I pay attention. I'm very receptive. Um, I ask questions when it's appropriate. I, if I know what case I'm going to have, I'll, you know, research it. Or if I have a case that I've not, that I just, you know, I only did a couple of times, I'll research that. But um, the biggest key is to be receptive. Don't argue. Don't um, talk at appropriate times. And with that, you'll go a long way because everyone is very willing to teach, even, you know, the surgeons and stuff. And you got to understand they're under a lot of, um, you know, pressure and stress Absolutely. also. These yeah. cases are, you know, very complex. Right. But if you go in there with the mindset that you're willing to learn, then you'll do well. Crystal, one of the things that you said earlier that you felt like your training from Edgecombe was was different or you know perhaps better than the the peers that you had over your internship why do you think that was what was the difference that you felt like made the difference for you i think just all the hard work that you and um miss lindsay did getting us into these um clinical sites where it was just a, it wasn't just and i love that our community hospitals it wasn't just our community hospitals they were big level one trauma hospitals. So we had exposure to traumas and not just, you know, outpatient surgeries, but we also had exposure to outpatient surgeries and surg surgical centers. So we got a wide variety. And I feel like that was, that was a lot better than the peers that I had. 
some of them had to travel like two hours just to a clinical site. Oh, wow. We were at a clinical site, I mean, three days a week, you know, all day. Um, we had the choice. And it was one of the things I loved about ECC now knowing about other schools. We were able to, you were able to point us towards what you wanted to do. Some of us wanted to do outpatient, you know, surgeries. Some of us wanted to do like crazy me, like traumas and <laughs> level ones and challenging cases, um, which I got, um, you were able to send us to those clinical sites where we didn't all have to just follow one another. So that was, that was also a great opportunity. And then coming here. Well, Crystal, I just, I just want to say on behalf of myself and Miss Lindsay and this program and this college, that we are just so very proud of you for, for getting through this. You are what I think they call a non-traditional student um, where we have, you know, uh, we have other family things going on and we don't live in a bubble. We, we live with the, the surrounding area and all of those things that go with it. And I'm just, I'm just so proud of you for jumping on and taking that opportunity. You didn't have to do that. Um, but I do think that it's going to change your life generationally in what you do and the cases that you do. And I will, uh, I will forever lean heavily on your experiences now at the Mayo. So um, I want to open it up to anybody who might have any questions uh, for either myself or we have lots of folks online who may have questions or just want to say hey to Crystal's face just because we haven't seen you here in a while. So I just want to open that up in case anyone has any questions or something they want to direct at us at this time. I wanted to say hi to Ms. Phillips and to Ms. Otrimsky. Hi, Mr. Pennington and Ms. Bottoms. How are you? And to my friend, Brooke. Thank you all for watching. We're, we're so proud of you, Crystal. Um, if, you. if your ears are ever burning, um, throughout the day, it's us talking about you, you know, um, only because, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, one of our folks is now, you know, working at a internationally recognized, you know, facility. I mean, it's just one of those things we have to talk about because it shows the, the local, the local folks that the opportunities that are available to them through us aren't just limited to right here, you know, so we really appreciate you kind of taking that risk and 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 making that happen we really do and we're proud of you thank you that's another thing i wanted to say um when you asked what would i want to let others know you know coming from moving from a small town you know in rocky mount north carolina the possibilities are still there i just Olivia. wanted to oh sorry oh, i just wanted to say hi to crystal we met 15 years ago when we both lived in Connecticut. And I am just utterly amazed at what you've done with your life, moving to Minnesota. <laughs> and I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Brooke. We have to catch up soon. Thank you so much. Yes. Crystal, this is your big sister. Oh, um, hi, that's my sister. And I'm so proud of you. You Thank have you. come so far. We love you and we are so proud of you. Thank it you hasn't been me. easy, but you made it by the grace of God. I'm so glad he put all those wonderful people in your life to guide you and direct you. And you are awesome. And I love you, you, baby sis. I love you. I love you too. Congratulations. Thank you. And it was going to take my sister to make me cry. That's my oldest sister. I love you. Samantha. Okay, I was trying I was trying with the emoji. But um hi Crystal. Hi Miss Phillips. How are you? I can't wait to see you. No, I'm good. I'm good. But I think uh I think you got a few folks as our tear ducts are kind of uh <laughs> swollen at this point. But listen, you're all big time now. So first things first, <laughs> uh I was telling my daughter how um you know that I know somebody um, from the Mayo Clinic. She's like, "Mommy, you think you know everybody?" So, uh, so I'm gonna put my plug in. I need a T-shirt. 
I need okay, a I, I got you. <laughs> so, I so will we'll, be home on May the 8th. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to exchange cash apps or something. Oh, um, no, so you don't worry about that. have a really nice <laughs> jacket, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> oh, know, okay. I have really nice Carol. jacket. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to give my daughter so you know a t-shirt will work. Or, or I will. Or I will. You have to yeah. email me the size. Okay. You. Um. But I just want to say, just um, resonating with all the uh, sentiments given already, um, and just thanking you for putting Rocky Mount and Edgecombe Community College on the map. I can't say that enough. Um, we're we're just so proud and in and in, in all of um, of what you've done coming from um, our institution. So just thank you for starting here at ECC, um, continuing and finishing and, and you know getting to the to the uh, finish line. That just that just speaks volumes. Um, and I was gonna ask you just, you know, what's is there something, what's one interesting fact about surgical technology that we may not know? Have you oh. uncovered anything that's, you know, just kind of sticks out that's the world may not know about this particular field. Oh my gosh. I mean, there's so many things, just all the <laughs> cool things you get to see. I mean, for some people may think that it's cool. So I'm not, um, I had the opportunity to, um, float to cardiac. I mean, I see many, very many, um, interesting things, um, in neurosurgery, but I was able to place my hand on a beating heart inside the patient's chest wow. and that adrenaline, it just, just all day um, here in neurosurgery. I mean, just the things that you get to see, I mean, brain, spine, actually the anatomy of it and to know how things work. And it's, it's very, very, very interesting. It's a very interesting field. Cool beans. Thank uh, you. Crystal, <laughs> this is Greg McLeod. Um, just one. Hi, Dr. McLeod. Hey, it's, I just wanted to say hello to you and let you know that we certainly, as Bruce mentioned, we we talk about you, we celebrate you, we lift you up, and we often think about you and don't want to bother you because you're busy with what you're doing. But I remember it was about this time um, uh, last year, it was around graduation when we learned about uh, your getting the internship for the summer that preceded, uh, preceded your employment. And um, and I remember that just being so excited and we took pictures, Mary Tom and, and Ron and the team taking your pictures at graduation in preparation for the announcement. So that was a real treat, but um, I knew you before then and that was because you also took advantage of some opportunities here at the college and that one of them was being one of our student ambassadors. And so I just reflected on that, that the fact that you represented the college as a student, but you're also representing us up there at the Mayo Clinic. So as you mentioned with Samantha asking for a shirt, you know, I don't know what your ECC gear is, but I hope you have. Oh, I have one. my, you do? I have my okay, ECC that, lab that. coat on and I have my jacket and I definitely make it known where I came from and what school I went to. Okay, well that's awesome. Cause I was gonna say, we could certainly send you stuff, but we don't have any cold weather items per se. So. <laughs> Um, I'm we'll not send sure the warm weather it. item so you can send the warm weather with it. <laughs> we'll see what we could do, but we certainly wish you well. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time out to share with us. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate every one of you. Thank you so much. Hello, Crystal. This is your sister, Tish, um, from Making Joy. Hi, that's my other sister. Hi, <laughs> Tish. <laughs> Hi, I just want to say um, we thank God for you. And thank you for taking us along on your beautiful journey. Um, as you succeeded and as you put your hand to the plow and didn't look back, and that's the word of God, that you put your hand to this plow and you didn't look back and you were fit. You were fit for the journey ahead. It takes a lot to do what you did and have a family. And we are forever cheering you on. We are forever praying you on. We are forever in your corner and we thank you. Thank you. And we salute you today. Um, for your beautiful journey, your beautiful journey, because it's not over. It's not over. It just begun. It has just begun. So hang on tight because the journey has just started. Much success, much blessings, and we cannot wait to see you, to love on you, and to hug you. But most of all, continue to follow and pray you through this beautiful journey of your life. We are proud of you. We love you. Thank you so much, Tish. I love you.
I promise, like, I do not want to cry. <laughs> Lindsay, did you want to chime in and say something to our girl? Sorry, I'm in the stairwell, so it may echo, but I get asked about you all the time at clinicals. Many people have asked me how you're doing. Do you like it? Are you still there? Oh. Chris is super excited to meet you, and he is so ready to go. He is so ready for the same opportunities, and he just cannot believe that he's getting the same path that you got. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, I cannot believe it either. I mean, I can believe it. Hard work, right, pays off, and I'm looking forward to meeting him, to meeting Chris, and like I said, just showing him around, and I'm very, very proud and very, very, very proud that he has come from Staying under the, from the same instruction. Thank you, Miss Susie. I know he. I know you're very proud. She is I hurt. just, I just put it out there. Y'all pick it up and run with it. I just get up, blather on. Y'all do the hard part, not me. Oh gosh. And Miss Otrimsky, is she still on? She is. I think she's hosting. She's actually doing it with a class. Oh, she's so the, hi to Miss Otrimsky's class. Is class. You, I think. I just wanted to thank her as well. I um, actually took two of Ms. Otrinsky's, um psychology classes at the same time and um, passed them. And she was there along the way when things were hard and different things were going on and even personal things in my personal life. And she was always there for me and pushing me along. So I really appreciate you. And I can't wait to see you in May. And Crystal, if I could jump in and say as well, um, you know, certainly don't want to um, uh, take you away from Mayo Clinic, but, you know, maybe at some point in your career, come back and, and bless us with your presence back in North Carolina and take some of our hospitals to the next level with your skills and your expertise. So think about it. Oh, I, I definitely will. I'm actually now um, thinking about well, I'm um, pursuing um, my bachelor's, so I'm just trying to figure that out now so that I can just keep on moving. And then you well, can Crystal, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it so much. It's been it's been an inspiring um, time with you and the discussion has been fantastic. And I, we send the same sentiments. We are all super proud of you and um, we can't wait to see you continue to soar and grow. And we just really appreciate the time that you gave us today um, to, to you and Susie to talk about the program, talk about your time at ECC and what you're doing. Uh, we just are really thankful. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Everett. Like I said, I look forward to seeing everyone at graduation. Yay. Very good. We look forward to seeing you too. Susie, anything before we close? I don't think so. I just want to thank everyone for giving us the opportunity to uh, visit with Crystal mm -hmm. and to uh, tout the program and, and some of our accomplishments going forward. And just, you know, just one of our many success stories with, with Crystal and we look forward to keeping our hand on the plow, as her sister said, and we'll just keep right on going. We're, we're thankful to do it. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you again for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Crystal. Thank and you. Great to see you soon. I'll see you guys soon. See you soon, Crystal. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you, too. All right. Come on, Uno. Come on, Boo Boo.